Uh, we were doing a little frequency response of amplifiers. Today we start with the first of the most important device of analog, which is an operational amplifier, nicknamed, short named OPAM. We want to talk about, uh, of course, in, I will show you a little later. This is a figure which I am showing you, which is a sketch for two stage OPAM. Uh, there is a possibility of surges in real opamps, which is right now put dotted one. Okay. The first stage is essentially what we call high gain stage, which is followed by another gain stage, which is basically high swing stage. And uh, then it is connected to buffers, which is typically push pull types, uh, output amplifiers as they are called. And uh, that gives the output to you. Uh, most uh, op-amps used are single ended. What does that mean? The output is only at one output. There are no differential two outputs. Okay. But let us say if you wish to have two outputs, there are possibilities and I will show you one circuit which does that. So, a CMOS op-amp which is uh, either double ended or single ended. Uh, normally, if it is double ended, you use current biasing, current source biasing. And if you are using single ended op-amp, normally it is current mirrored biasing. Okay. Normally it is not necessary, you can do any kinds of biasing, but normally it is done through current mirrors. This normal word should be taken seriously because not every circuit uses exactly the way I say, individual requirements may push you to some other ones. Okay. So this is typically what we want to know. So what is the first stage, uh, second stage and third stage? which allows you to do this kind of features, high gain followed by high swings and then finally the buffer out. Buffers are always required for driving larger loads. Okay. And in the case of MOS circuits 99.99 .99, they will be capacity loads. So you are driving a large capacitor which may be the input capacitance of the next chip or next stage of the circuit. Okay. And uh, like in the case of digital circuit, uh, we typically expect the load at least four times the CX, which is called FO4 loads. So even in this case, at least whatever the highest capacitance, you put 10 times CL, so that that becomes the maximum possible load. But in general, in our design right now, we will specify for what load this needs to be designed. The features of OPAM, we will discuss when we start designing OPAM, what exactly the parameters we are worried about like gain, CMR, bandwidth and what, all, what else. But let us do some basic thinking on this. So once I declare that I want a high gain stage, the possibility of such high gain stage is either through a cascode amplifier, but it will give only generally single ended outputs and require large power dissipations. So we will go for DFAM. So the first stage of a op-amp is normally a differential amplifier or difference. Uh, okay, there is a word I keep saying differential amplifier and a difference amplifier. I will differentiate later, but in books sometimes they are same, sometimes they are not. The difference amplifier is essentially outputs are also difference. Two outputs, two inputs, okay, which are required in many uh, filter organizations. Okay. So first stage is the DFAM, which whose output can be single ended or can be double ended and it is given to a, another stage which is normally high swing high gain stage. Okay. Most of the gain picked up here, the rest gain is picked up here plus swings are improved. Then there is a last stage which I am showing you buffer, output buffer or is output amplifier. Typically it is push pull kind. But not necessarily everywhere, but take it normally it will be a push pull. What does push pull means? Either the top transistor will be on or the lower transistor will be on, okay, like a normal output stage of a, any digital hardware. So that is the kind of, but the importance there is they can drive larger capacitors, we can, they can provide larger currents, okay. Yes. Yeah, it is a gain stage, but it, it gives you output swings. V out max, V out min is picked up from there, okay, and not from the defam stage. Okay, is that clear? Uh, 
then in may, most uh, plants for the case of stability or by without doing thinking over it there will be a feedback capacitance connected CGD is for example always there or other parasitic capacitance may appear which may give you output to input connections at the at least the output stage this stage and in that case you will have a feedback. Now this feedback also creates feed forward. Okay. So in all our analysis we try to avoid feed forward situations. Okay. What does feed forward can give you? A 0. So we are trying to see that 0 does not appear at least in the range of frequencies where we want, wish to operate. Now the feedback is what we few day, few minutes we will discuss later. But if you see carefully this, uh, if you look at the diffam, the first two transistors maybe here is, may I put it new slide just for the heck of it, just look at either of them. This M1, M2 receives input voltage and converts them into GM V1, GM V2 kind of currents. So this is essentially called V2I converters. When these I's are fed to these, they give an output which means current to voltage converter starts here. Is that clear? So this block is or this block is V to I converter, this block is I to V converter. Okay. So this first two stages, uh, a defined as two parts, one is the V to I converter part, the other is why I am giving you these figures, because this is how one designs, which area we are looking into. So the first part is converter from V to I, they are the I to V which together makes a defam followed by a gain stage like shown here or shown here. Now this gain stage you can see from here since this is an output M5 is receiving VGS and therefore converts currents. So next stage of this is a V to I converter and that current passes through M6. So this will then give you I to V converter at this output. Okay. So a typical op-amp, two-stage op-amp has two V to I and two I to V converters. Okay. Is that point clear? This is only a statement, nothing very big, just to tell you how fundamentally one should look the circuit from inside. Is that okay? So first is V to I, then I to V, then V to I, and then I to V. This is a two-stage op-amp. The two possible, of course there are many more, but these are the two most popular ones which are used in op-amp designs. This is a double-ended output and this is a single-ended output. So in this, this is your defam. Now since it is not diode connected, so normally current is not mirrored, actually you apply through VB another transistor and create ISS. And you also bias this VBB, these to make it current sources. Okay. So adjust W by L of the last transistor to suit this current which is going to go down. Is that not the other way? The VB and W by L of this is so adjusted that the currents which I am receiving from the current source are essentially received at the ISS which you want to use as a design spec. Okay. So since this is from where VB I can create? Voltage reference, preferably if you want a very nice stable reference, band gap reference or at least VT references. You can see it is a double ended, so one output is taken here, one output is taken here and then you have two single stage output stages which is essentially the same one which is in the single end also. So I can create a VO1 and VO2 and if I choose M5, M6 not identical, I will have VO2 separate from VO1s. Is that clear? So I have a double ended output of my choice which is proportional to input voltage V in. Is that clear? Please remember I can make a ratio of this, I can make a ratio of this and can change the currents in this and therefore VO1 and VO2 that is V2I and I2V converter can be modified to suit different VO1 and different VO2 for the same input V in. This is essentially double ended output. If all are equal then the VO1 will be equal to VO2 then you do not need that. If you are using same then why do you want to? Okay. At times you still need to 
uh, in a layout it is sometimes preferred to have same output going other two sides. So, you may as well use this, but that does not help too much because it consumes power for nothing. Okay. okay. So, this is a as I say not very often used, but if needed can be employed in mini op amps. There are specific op amps which gives you double ended outputs. Many of the LM series which is a low noise op amps, they are double ended outputs. Okay. Even 8576 is also double ended, very famous low power low, low noise device. This is the one which is most of the 741 series, 747, whatever, 725, 723, whatever standard op amps you see in the labs, uh, they use its single ended outputs. A DFAM whose load is decided by diode connection. We have already done analysis for this. Okay. We have also done this individually. So, it is not that they are too different, it is only a question of load which you put there. And in these cases, most times both this M6, M7, if there are any other stage are driven through a current mirror, the biasing is not shown here. So, there will be a biasing circuit which will give you a current mirror and that same output is connected to as many transistors as you want to have same currents, is that correct? Okay. So, when I start looking into this design, all that I have to design is the W bias of this and W bias of this. Uh, to meet specification. What else I can design? The size of M7 which may design the RS, RSS or ISS values, okay. Because I can mirror whatever current I want, is that clear? I do not have to have M7, M6 same either. I can have different M6, M7 if need rises. Normally, I will not do that, but if I need, I can do that because I just have to make different W bias for this. The problem there is different how much will be decided by this because this is going to push the current. So, it is not too much in your hand. Okay. Is that okay? Okay, so I am I am my end product is OPAM will be given some specification to me, and all that I will design or I will get an output is sizes of all transistors. Okay, that is what design is about because once I know the size. We are not done layout, maybe in between before we go details, one class on the design uh, layout may be helpful. Just a minute, I will come back to it. A typical transistor, I already said, this is a black line which is think it is red or pink, it is a gate, this is a green line which is diffusion, this is source drain gate, this is essentially what you are doing. This is the transistor cross section, those drain and if you have a window here, let us say oxide on the top and contact here. So, I can open a contact here, these are all oxides contact here, this may be my drain, this may be my grate and this will be my source. So, I can open a window inside this and make a metal contact on this. I can open a window here and I can put a metal contact here. I can open a window here, cut and I have a contact here. Okay. This is called layout. What is the transistor length and width here? From the this is length and this something is width. So, what do you show here? Which is your length and which is your width? Obviously, the poly thickness is your length and poly width on this diffusion widths are essentially your width of transistor. So, this is essentially convert, this is what I design from circuit and once I design, I give you designs, they transfer it on the silicon to create this part, uh, actual structures. So, my gear at the end for any designer is to create patterns, that is what all that we are going to do at the end. So, what do I need? Lengths and weights. If you give me this, I will be able to draw the correct sizes of transistors and if that is so, I believe that the technology people can translate what I said on silicon and therefore, the performance should actually be as values of W by I have chosen. If it does not, I will tweak something and come back once again. That is called turnaround. Okay. 
So, this please remember so as a designer we are our output is only size waves ok some specification electrical specification given using all that circuit analysis we should arrive at size waves and of course connections because two transistor how will we connect them how many points will go on a single node. So, this is another connectivity problem which is interconnects. So, all that we design is the W by L for transistors and possible connection interconnections of thickness and widths because that will decide R and C for the circuit. So, these are all that we design as from a designer's point of view. Technology people pick up this mask and actually print one by one and typical process is around 24 masks for a standard CMOS. If you want extra anything else you thought I should do another this, another mask. It may go as high as 32 masks in some cases. Each mask cost hell, hell of M is millions and dollars. So, do not just say I could put another window and do something because that may cost the profit to expenses is ratio which we will calculate. In DRAM they may do that extra also because DRAMs should be sold in millions. Same way they may say do it in microprocessor because they are off shelf any number are sold ok. But if you say some specific chip they will be sold hundreds or a company only will buy that much or thousand, two thousand then you cannot put extra money ok. So, vendor will decide what will do ok. So, is that clear as a designer my job is only, only to get sizes ok. Interconnects I believe I can independently handle though it is not very really easy that is becoming the worst part right now. But uh, for the sake of NLR right now I say ok I am interested right now only in W by L of the all transistor which I see and if I put their values I can create this and if I create this I believe that technology people will be able to translate into a actual silicon chip that is the output from us transferred to actual circuits is that clear. So, please remember for us it does not matter uh, any other thing is not relevant for us of course you may have limitation of bandwidth, you may have limitation of gain, power, sleeve rates, VO max, VO min, ICMRs, you may put any PSRRs, CMRRs, you may put any number of constraints or specs for you. But at the end of this what best among them you can get for the design you are asking find W bias for all of them. So, I will give a OPAM design later. For those who have access to SMDP sites, otherwise ask someone who works in VLSI lab, uh, there is already an OPAM design uh, sitting on my SMDP site under one course which I did uh, from at Goa, IEP is called. So, there is an OPAM design for a better, I will actually change my specs for your course so that it is not be identical, but the method will remain same. So, those who wish to see that can even now see that. It is around 10, 12 pages or 15 slides or more, more just to show you how designs go at the end. Okay, is that point clear? So, what is our aim is having taken a circuit and given specification, okay, this is also our choice. This one, this one, any other architecture you, you can choose either depend on your thinking, but then they sh it should meet the given specs for given technology node as well because you will be specified 0.25 micron process, 0 0.35, 0 0.18, 0 0.13 or 90 or 6 whichever technology they say that must conform to that technology node. What will change there? Beta, beta dash will change, VTs will change, power supply will change. So, many parameters and their variations will change and therefore, the design will become even tougher as I go down in the uh, node values ok. So, designing at 0.35 is the ideal or 5 micron will be the best because everything will work ok. So, when we design why we choose 5 micron but then we are sure that in case per se you translate I assure you 100 percent it will work ok. But if someone does it on 45 nanometers me and you will keep guessing may or may not that is the problem with technologies ok. So, having shown you this two hardware part uh, this one which I am going to use now ok. So, there are two stages the defense stage and a output stage uh, second gain stage. 
So, the net gain is A V 1 into A V 2, A V 1 is nothing but the gain of a D fam, A V 2 is gain of a single ended amplifier. What is this? Just a minute before you write, which is this amplifier is? Please remember, I never said all input should be only on n channels. This is a p channel device which is taking an input. You can see an input is coming there. This is the load for it. So, this is a common source amplifier with a p channel driver. Okay. So, do not look the other way. Is that okay? Input is given to 5, which is a p channel device. Okay. And to keep it minus VGS, this actually the source is given higher voltage. Okay, so, that minus values are automatically created. Is that clear? That is what we do in CMOS, that is what we did here. Okay. So, please take it this is a standard DFAM followed by a gain stage single common source amplifier. Whatever W by S will give you, whatever currents it will keep, will give you GMs and ROs. And once I know them, I can I will be able to evaluate gain of this stage and gain of this stage. Okay, so, the example is the A V 1 will be minus G M 1 R O 2 by R O 4 for the DFAM, the A V 2 will be minus G M 5 into R O 5 R O 6. So, the gain finally two stage gain is G M 1 G M 5 R O 2 R O 5 R O 5 R O 6. Please take it in the first case the output is picked up here, is that clear? These two transistors are not diode connected, so they have ROs. Okay. So, they may be GM parallel 1 by GM parallel, but RO will take care of them. Whereas, in this case 1 upon GM is its RO actually, RO parallel 1 upon GM, but I am not taking output here anyway. Is that clear? So, that those terms are missing simply because I am not picking output from that end, I am only picking output from here. So, GM times either this GM or this GM because currents will be half half into R parallel of these two is the output voltage. Is that correct? Same way, whatever I am receiving here, the size ratio uh, RO6 in parallel RO5 into GM of RO5, uh, GM of 5 is the gain for common source this. Is that clear? So, it is very simple what we did and therefore, we will not do again and again solving. We have already solved DFAM, we already solved common source, common drain, common everything. So, we just substitute whenever. Is that okay? So, there is nothing very big, this is a DFAM, this is a common source amplifier. Though I have written it, but you can see that I can just multiply the two gains. I also know I can calculate GM1 and GM2 by writing 2 beta 1 IDS1, 2 beta 2 IDS2, beta 1 normally a 99.999 will be equal except the variation part. The thresholds will be equal, the sizes will be equal, but do not think 3 and 4 will have same W by 1 as 1 and 2 because they are loads, they may be different values compared to this. Why are there other reason also they will be different sizes? The lower transistor of what kind? N kind, the upper ones are P kind. So, even for the same current, V ratio will appear. Okay. So, for that matter, their sizes may be equal between M3 and M4, but will not be same as M1 and M2 as we did earlier. So, I can calculate GM1, GM2, RO1, RO2, RO3, RO4, all uh, this knowing the currents and once I know the current. Now, the question is how much current this will draw. Okay. I have an example, I will show you this. Please remember this current though it is showing from here, I do not know what is the size of M6 I need. Okay. I will see to it that this current is same as this current. Okay, we have both P channels, same current flows here, to flow the same current here, this will not be same current here. Is that clear to you? Let us say this is ISS, this is ISS by 2, this is ISS by 2. So, current which will flow through M6 is not ISS, but ISS by 2. So, for that W by L will be different. Is that point clear? Though it is mirrored here, but their size may not be equal. Is that clear to you? So, these are the issues. We should quickly look at it from where current, I, that is why the first figures were shown, V2I, I2I, I e, V2I. This is V2I which is pushing current in the load. Is that clear? 
So, the current is coming from M5 and not from M6. Is that clear to you? Yes. You can see from it why it should have because if, if these two values are very different which you can, I mean there is no physical problems. The problem with this the current which it will draw and current which it will able to push may not be sufficient then if it is too high from there. At best this current can be pushed here. Okay. Now, if that increases too much then this will not be able to sustain this maximum current. Is that correct? Let us say only ISS goes through so that till ISS it will happen. But beyond that I can always increase 4 times, 8 times, 20 times then the currents cannot be overall be actually available to you. So, device will not remain in, this device may go out of saturation. So, therefore, the best possible solution is run this current into this which guarantees you both transistor to remain in saturation. Is that clear? These are the tricks when you do simulation if you do hopefully some you realize what happens. You change yourself and figure out what has happened okay? and that is the trick. Yes, it will, it will. I, I, please take it this is this gate and this is the source. This value is can always be equal to this if the currents are same. If this current and this current are same this values will be always equal. So, that is why I am saying I am sizing that way. No? I am exactly telling you this I is equal to beta by 2 W by L Vgs minus I am keeping things fixed so that I can push the same current. Is that clear? P01 is essentially not an this is divided by these this is a ratio this is an AC current you are you do not confuse between ACs and DCs is that clear. The first part was the DC biasing situation the, now I am talking of AC current please get this two modes differently working ok. okay. So, I have done similar expressions I have figured out I, I can just tell you we are just running uh, the jokes uh, what we have done I can find R01 by 1 upon lambda 1 R s by 2 R o 2 R o 3 similar way I can calculate all R o's and I can calculate all G m's okay. and if I know one of them then I can start calculate like all lambdas are equal let us say for P channel and all lambdas are equal for N channels. So, only 2 R o's will be required to be calculated for those ISS is known so go back and calculate G m for them and keep doing till you get W by s for or example I am just going to show. This is the formula is only that I design use for design of a diffam. Is that correct? Diffam to this. So, I have an example for you you know this does not look to be very nice expressions. Is that okay what I did? I am just trying to say I can evaluate RO, I can evaluate GM in terms of size and currents. ISS by 2 and W by L's will decide my ROs and GMs. Is that clear if alpha lambdas are known? Typical lambdas for 5 micron process is 0 0.06 per volt. Okay. Others may have 0 0.04, 0 0.025, but which one is better, higher or lower? 0 is the ideal, that is, RO is infinite, okay. 0 is the ideal, but 0 you will not get. The larger technologies have larger lambdas okay, in general. So, a typical values which my uh, problems taken from Boyce book is 0 0.06 is typical value they choose, but in real life when I give a problem I may not choose 0 0.06 it may be much different from the then I may use a technology of 0 0.25. So, the specs given by 0 0.25 I will use it in your calculation. Right now as I said I am using Boyce data and therefore I am using his values, but otherwise please take it the given data is coming from where technology file on a spice there is a technology file which will give you all specification for that technology node of a transistors is that clear. So, pick up actual data from there which in my case I will give you a table okay, or at least give the values. Okay, so, is that point clear? So, let me start having a problem which may clarify many of those doubts. Let us say our total bias current in diffam is 20 microamps ISS. RO is 1 upon lambda ID and GM is under root 2 beta IDS. Itna ek liklo, okay. I agree it is relevant, but that much you can think. Okay. Dekho, ye usme sab kuch hai, jo fir se hai wo sab. Single ended, all single ended. You know, as I said, double ended are uh, specific devices required 
Not that they are not used, huh? whether they are used as differential systems, but as of now. Okay, please remember I am using, uh, just to give ideas, using data from Boyes, Baker, Lee's work or Lee's book. So, pardon me if that data is copied as it is and problems is maybe slightly modified or used there also. But I have solved myself, I have not checked with them. If the bias current is chosen as 20 microamps, then the each arm will get a DC will be of ISS by 2 which is 10 microamps. So, I can calculate if given betas, lambdas, okay. So, I calculate GM1 which is 2 beta 1 ISS by 2. I know beta and dash. I just do not know right now W by L, but that is what I need to know. RO1 is equal to RO2, lambdas are given to you which is lambda by 2, ISS by 2, RO2 parallel is 1 upon lambda 2 plus lambda 4, they may be equal, but if you wish you can write lambda 2 plus lambda into ISS by 2. Is that, uh, I am not saying lambda is equal, then I lambda 2 plus lambda 4 times ISS by 2 is 1 upon RO2 parallel RO4. So, this value I calculate 0.06. It is 0 0.06 per volt, both of them. All actually lambdas are chosen same. Okay. Actually, even that is not true. P channel lambdas are different from N channel lambdas. For, for, that is what I say for the simplicity. Okay. So, what is the current in each arm of a defam? ISS by 2 is beta 1 by VGS minus VT1. So, root ISS root beta 1 by 2 is VGS minus VT1. Why I am using this? For what purpose? Why is the expression written? Do I know this? For a 5 micron process, I know VGS1. How much it will be? VOV plus VT. For this technology, VOV is 0.37 volt as I declared earlier, okay, by this book. Okay. Is that okay? What is the purpose of doing this? If I know these two values, okay, then and if I know this value, then I know beta dash, then what can I calculate? W by L, that is the purpose of all this evaluation. Is that clear? Root ISS is beta 1 by 2. So, if I do this, so if VOV is chosen 0.37 volt for a VT of 0.83 for N channel and 0.9 minus 0.9 for P channels then VGS1 is equal to VGS2 equal to 0.83 plus 0.37 which is for a 5 fold supply VSS is 2.5 minus VDD is 2.5 total supply voltage is 5 fold for which these values are valid. So, I get VGS1 uh, equal to 1.2, ISS is 20 microvan each is a half current and if you solve this that becomes W by Ln is equal to 15 by 5 and by same argument same current going up, I can, I will have to calculate VGS3 and VGS4 from where? Instead of 0.83 use 0.9, okay, because I still believe excess voltage is same for both N channel and P channels. So, if I know VGS1, VGS2, VGS3, VGS4, I will be able to evaluate W by L of 1, 2 and for N channel as well as for 3 and 4 for the P channels. Please, I have already said whenever I calculate W by Ls, I neglect all 1 by lambda VDS terms, okay. But when I calculate RO, I actually use it because otherwise RO becomes infinite, okay. So, all calculations of W by Ls and GMs, you may forget about 1 plus lambda VDS term. But whenever you will calculate RO, that time do not neglect lambda because that will create havocs for you, okay. okay. So, I know this values. Now, to find an open loop gain, what is the open loop gain? The first stage GM1 RO2 parallel RO4 is the first stage, GM6 RO6, 5 and 6, uh, uh, not 5, what is num that name? 5 and 6, RO5 parallel RO6 is the uh, GM 6, 5 times that is the gain for the second stage. So, this is GM 1, GM 5, this is RO 2, RO 5, RO 5, RO 6. Uh, substitute the values already I have, I have evaluated, is that correct? 
So, if you substitute this, I did not calculate, but roughly I did some calculations. This is called back of envelope mind calculation. So, no envelope, but just by looking at it, ye cut gaya, ye cut gaya. So, around just write down this typical value which you will get is around 2500. What should be the unit? <laughs> volt per volt, it is a voltage amplifier specified properly. Though it does not matter because the ratio, but even then do specify which amplifier you are using. So, give a unit V by V. Now, why this whole game was? Is that point clear? I am able to evaluate and why this L was, OL was written? No feedbacks are right now used in any part. Therefore, it is called open loop gains. Okay. In the next part that we will put closed loops now. Okay. That is the next thing we want to do. So, right now itself I started writing open loop. Okay, so, that later we do not have to say what is the open loop. So, I have calculated. Is that everyone written? Chaliye. So, AL is typically and not exactly. It may be 2490 or 2650, whatever it is. 150 ke aspas idhar idhar hai hai, just kata hua hai. But around that. Okay. Now, the game which we want to see very clearly from this expressions of AOL, GM mein root ISS hai aur lambda mein ISS hai denominator mein. So, jab lambda times RO, uh, sorry, GM times RO aata hai. So, proportionality 1 upon is hai uske upar, two stage ke liye, square ho raha So, we say open loop stage gain for a two stage amplifier op amp is essentially inversely proportional to ISS, is that correct? This is a feature which you should use for your designs, is that clear? What is the feature I got? Why did all this calculation? I figured out if I reduce the current by 10, okay, what I will achieve? Low power. Fantastic. Two things I may lose image, I may improve bandwidth also, okay. I may lose bandwidth also, but I may get gain higher. Another thing I may hurt is that I will see the slew rate, it will not charge faster, okay. So, but if I want very high, high slew rate, I want higher bandwidth, I will increase GM, that means I increase ISS, but I will lose the gain because gain and bandwidth will go opposite. Is that clear to you? So, this is what designers do, which one you have to cater to, okay, and how much closer you can come from either side. So, I wrote, wrote again, hence the increase of ISS may improve bandwidth, but decrease AOL or vice versa. Please remember in real life, we are not just worried about these values, but we want that these values remain constant, okay, for what variations? process variation, temperature variations and even power supply variations. Okay. So, if any variation in power supply appears, currents will change, any variation in W bias or process parameters change, currents will change and in any time temperature changes, so are the currents change. So, our worry is we do not want gain to vary with specific, uh, any such environmental or design related variations. This word that they should be very low sensitivity for them essentially means system should have some mechanism which actually monitors the change and corresponding proportional something it returns to input which corrects it either way. If it is increasing it should decrease, if it is decreasing it should increase. Such a system which we do is called feedback systems. Is that clear? So, why feedback? Because these are not constant values. In our assumption right now we assume everything 5 volt remains same, W bars are same, everything is same. Between M1, M2 itself they will not be same, okay. And if there is plus 5 percent, minus 5 percent, you have 10 percent variation, okay, which is possible. This may not be possible, this may not be happen on your layouts because that is the screen graphic does very well, okay. But when it goes to silicon, the lithography technique does not allow everything as good, okay. Okay. Uh, so, we wish to visit before we go to the op amp design that since I want a stable gain, stable everything, I like to quickly look into a little bit of feedback which I did in second year, many of you might have done it. 
Many of you still remember better than what I know. Many of you never wanted to know, so learn now, either way. So let us refresh ourselves from the feedback because we know feedback and stability are related. Uh, obviously, this word is true that one kind of feedback may actually spoil the stability, the other may actually stabilize. So all our tricks is to see that the one which stabilizes always remains and in some other case, uh, that is the joke every designer analog says, if I am designing an amplifier, it oscillates. If I am designing an oscillate, it amplifies. So, okay. So, the trick is the amplifier must work as an amplifier and the oscillator must oscillate at a frequency. Okay. And the issues are always the opposite. Okay. When you design an oscillator, you want something happen and suddenly damping starts. Okay. So, what I happen? Same way amplifier, you think everything should be okay, then it starts giving outputs like this. So, the worries are very uh, important in design and these should be understood from the basic perspective of feedbacks. Okay. Uh, so, let us look at feedback once again. Uh, typical feedback system is shown here. As I say, this is only a precursor to what we are actually looking for, but I am just going quickly through the basic feedback theory which will make us understand why we are doing something. So, this is an open loop amplifier. Excess is the signal, RIF is the input impedance seen from that. This is some kind of a summer or adder sigma term. Okay. The impedance seen by the open loop amplifier is RI and this is an input XI. Output resistance seen inside out to the open loop amplifier is RO. Output is X0 and the impedance seen outside X0 is ROF which receives essentially some network impedance from beta. The feedback is through a fraction of x0 is returned. Please remember beta is always less than 1. So, fraction is returned to the summer and then xs plus xf will happen depending on the sign either xs minus xf occurs or xs plus xf occurs depending on the sign of 2 which you receive. Okay, so, AL is called open loop gain, beta is called feedback factor. Normally, beta is passive element, okay, normally, but need not be. Okay. And if it is need not, or if it is the other way, then the analysis becomes very, very complicated. Okay. But right now, we will say assume constant. So, we say x0 is the gain times xi, xi is the input to open loop gain. Uh, amplifier x0 is the output, so x0 is AL j omega xi. AL j omega xi is nothing but xs minus xf, the way right now signs are shown. xi is therefore xs minus xf because of this I wrote this, and xf is nothing but beta times x0. So x0 is AL xs minus AL beta x0. So, if I now define the closed loop gain which is x0 by xs, then it is AOL upon 1 plus AOL beta. The sign of this can become minus depending on the AOL is of what sign. Is that clear? AOL is negative, it will become 1 minus A beta. If it is 2 stage, it may become 1 plus A beta. So, right now I did not want to put a sign. In real life, I will put a minus or plus as it appears. Okay. Now, this fact that closed loop gain is related to open loop gain through AOL upon 1 plus AOL beta and in the control system theory or in feedback theory, we give some names for this. If you have any book, these are standard definitions in any book including the book yesterday I said about Sedra, Smith and me. So, they us may be a here. AL is the open loop gain, this is called mixing area, this is called sampling area. So, you sample the output return to input to a mixing. So, AL is gain without feedback, ACL is the closed loop gain with feedback and we define a term AL beta as the loop gain, okay, as the loop gain. Also, it is called return ratio, some books like Gray's, uh, Gray and Meyer's book use it return ratio. 
Okay. So, if you are per se Raj who happens to see the Gray and Myers book, wo bola loop gain nahi bole wo log, isliye bola return ratio. Bode also use the word return ratio not the loop gain. Okay, so essentially uh, the 1 plus A beta actually decides the feedback available to you okay, because A L is the open loop gain and this is additional term which is coming, so it is deciding the part coming from feedback. Okay. These are definitions. If you see the expressions, everyone has, these are standard and as I say at least the fourth year students who have taken my course second year, this slide I actually copied from that. You can see this number appearing here. Okay. Is that okay? What is amount of beta? One upon A beta decide how much you are away from A O. If open loop is A O L, that's the term which is changing the gain by putting one plus A beta. So if that is larger, A O L will be net gain is smaller. If it is smaller, that is higher. But it will never reach A O L anyway. Okay, unless beta is removed. If let us say the loop gain A beta is greater than 1, then A L A L cancels or A O cancels and we see closed loop gain is 1 upon beta. Is this good or bad? It is very good because beta is a passive network okay, which is relatively can be kept constant. Okay. So if you have a feedback and your gain are uh, loop gains are higher, then you are safer because your feedback is very much stable. Okay, so worry in all this calculation is we always assume beta uh, gain once you do this it is constant. No, actually beta itself may vary. Okay, beta resistor hai, wo bhi temperature coefficient leke aa hai. Okay, but that's how we say R1 upon R1 plus R2. Thoda and thoda to kam kari diya maine. Okay, however if beta is less than one, then ACL can be greater than one, and however ACL is A01 plus A beta can change with beta and value and sign of A0. Okay. So there are two possible ways the uh, feedback can affect us. If you see our figure, if the Xi and Xf are in the same sense, then they add and they are opposite sense, uh, sorry they are opposite sense they add, if they are in the same sense they actually subtract. Okay. Battery hai, plus minus plus minus add ho jayega, plus minus minus plus subtract ho jayega. So essentially one which reduces the Xi value from its excess value, we say it is negative feedback. But it does not mean always reduces, it also can correspondingly change output will return less feedback and try to adjust. Okay. Where do you think positive feedbacks are used? Oscillators. For all amplifiers we prefer negative feedback and that is what my issue was that when I design an amplifier. I will end up in this, when I design an oscillator I will end up here okay. because both are functions of some parameters, one may dominate over other and you forgot to train them well. So, okay, so basic idea is to design a negative feedback circuit. Uh, just for the heck of completeness, uh, if you have a negative uh, feedback, what essentially we gain in an amplifier? Is that okay everyone? This is standard. Okay. The first thing it actually does is desensitivity of the gain. What does desensitivity means? It reduces the sensitivity. If you see a closed loop gain which is A0 upon 1 plus A0L, you can write, I have sometimes I wrote A0, sometimes AOL. So it is A0 upon 1 plus A0 beta, DACL is DA0 1 upon differentiate kya. Okay. Then we say DACL is DA0 upon 1 plus A beta square. This uh, still connecting this DA0 this into 1 plus A0 is ka multiply here. Okay. So this essentially give me DA0 by A0 is equal to 1 upon A0 beta DACL by ACL. So you can see any change in A0 will be reduced by 1 plus A beta for the closed loop system. So you are desensitized. Change in A0 is now reduced in the ACL system by as much as 1 upon 1 plus A beta. So this is called desensitivity parameter or factor. So any percentage change in A0 
please remember this is the standard technique of showing sensitivities a d a 0 by is d y by y equal to d x by x uska relation do percentage in this percentage change in how much okay. So, essentially they say the change percentage here will be reduced in this because by this factor okay. So, this is a desensitivity. The second advantage which feedback gives for an amplifier specific is uh, let us look at the so the second feature of uh, negative feedback is it improves the bandwidth okay. Let us say your open loop gain is a mid band upon 1 plus s omega 0 where omega 0 is the first pole dominant pole we call it then a m upon 1 plus s omega 0 is a 0 a o l is a 0 right now. Then with the negative feedback a c l s is a o l s upon 1 plus a o l s beta substitute this quantity here and here ok. So, you get a m upon 1 a is mid band gain a m upon 1 plus s by omega 0 upon 1 plus a m upon s plus omega into beta collect the terms and define a c l 0 as a m upon 1 plus a m beta which is independent of frequency. So, d c closed loop gain d c closed loop gain a m is the d c mid band gain for open loop system. So, I get a c l s is a c l o upon 1 plus s time s by 1 plus a m beta times omega 0. So, now the pole has been shifted from omega 0 to 1 plus a beta times omega 0. So, you have improved your bandwidth by this much amount by just putting a feedback. Is that clear? So, why is that clear? But if you see clo uh, closed loop gain what it has done? It has reduced by that much amount. So, bandwidth is increased by that much amount ok. Please take it these are my notations names you may have if you are reading from any other book and they are followed but follow universally what you follow once. Like spice uses k as the beta ok. But some spice new versions use k by 2 or rather beta by 2 as k. So, think of it this can worry you because you are losing 50 percent on that ok. Like Swiss level 3 level 49 versions use the beta dash by 2 as k dash whereas the 3.3 of the old versions in G spice they only use beta dash as k dash ok. The next of course this I made a statement obviously the bandwidth improves gain falls. A third most important reason why one works with the uh, feedback negative feedbacks is it actually reduces what we call nonlinear distortions in amplifiers. What does nonlinear distortion means? If you have a characteristics V0 versus Vn for a given Vn value if the linearity is not held then the since the curve is not linear it is a nonlinear term. So, when you actually find V0 in terms of Vn yeah square cube polynomial terms will appear. So, much of the power or energy will be lost in other frequencies ok second harmonic third harmonic and higher harmonics whereas you want all the energy should go to fundamental. So, that means larger the slope change more and more energy is being lost that is V0 is not getting at that frequent fundamental frequency exactly transferring from Vn ok that is called harmonic distortion. The third harmonic distortion is the worst among all because that phases in exactly with the first ones. So, it gives huge interference. So, in RF design or any other designs the worry is THD ok, but that we will see later. So, let us say this is uh, the kind of uh, characteristics without feedback and in this range P0 Vn is linear beyond this of course, it changes the slope it may actually fall further. So, these are nonlinear terms. So, any input here or here with this slope will give you second and third or fourth harmonics. However, if you add a feedback you have just now seen gain is something like reduced now, but, but uh, this, but now you can see uh, the this frequency term up to which Oh, sorry, sorry. That's what I was saying. How it is opposite? Okay. 
No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Okay. So what essentially is trying to say is as I change dv0 by dv in changes, that means the linearity is correspondingly changing. So the idea behind uh, putting a feedback is increase linearities. Okay. So jab bhi linear, what is the purpose then? You may increase linearity, but your gains will be correspondingly different from your requirements. So if the bandwidth will be different, but at least for large signal operations, probably you will be able to operate better. Okay. Okay. So this is the three things why everyone goes for. Uh, negative feedbacks. Uh, so, from where the in our op amps or anywhere from where or any amplifier where the feedback is coming in a transistor, normal transistor, if common source for example is there, where the, which is the feedback which is coming from? CGD, okay. CGD D is the output node. G is the input node. So, the capacitance between gate and drain essentially is always available to you as a feedback factor. Okay. So, irrespective whether you put any C, external C there, CGD is always going to put you in negative feedback system. Okay. And if that happens, that is why systems have lower bandwidth we have calculated with CGDs, but it is relatively will be stable operations. Want more stability that C will build actually increase, but doing that what else we will do? We will see that. That is the way designs. Okay. So, we want to use uh, this before we quit for the day. Here is something which you should know. There are the two terms we use in feedbacks or any Bode system of free frequency response. We call those terms as gain margin and phase margins. Okay, these are most important parameters in design. We will be specified phase margin for an amplifier okay. or if not specified as a designer you will have to choose it how much I should have. Should I have a 45 degree phase margin, 50 degree phase margin, 55 degree phase margin or 65 or 80 or 90. Okay. You may choose either of the phase margins how will they influence the performance is what we are going to see. Okay. So, what is the phase margin we will like to see. This is our closed loop system. The closed loop gain is A s upon 1 minus A s beta s and as I said we define the loop local loop, uh, loop gain as A s beta s. Here the A s is taken minus so sign is going accordingly. There is a standard criteria which is called Barkhausen criteria for oscillations or non instability which says A j omega 0 into beta j omega 0 which is L j omega 0 should be less than the magnitude y should be less than 1 for stability where omega 0 is the frequency at which the loop gain phase is 0. I repeat omega 0 is the frequency at which the loop gain is uh, sorry the angle or phase of that is 0. Angle means phase, phase is 0 at that frequency, at that frequency A times beta must be less than 1 then the system will remain stable. In case of oscillator what will do it? We will actually break this to make it oscillate okay. because gain is minus. Though this is taken at like this, but this sign is taken as a return with a minus signs because the gain is less than dB the way we calculate. Okay. So, you will just check it, we will come back to it again. Okay. Now, here is the important graph which is given in every book. If not, you can note down from here. This is a representative graph, nothing very, uh, this is the Bode plot. I am plotting a loop gain versus frequency. Okay. Let us say I have a pole P1 where the loop gain starts falling from this frequency P1 and let us also say for design the second pole is at the gain bandwidth point which I can design. GBW 
is this where the gain becomes 1 the pole actually occurs there okay. is that point clear the P2 pole occurs right here this is just to explain nothing it may occur later or it may occur earlier but just to make the case important study case is that clear? the first pole is here second pole is actually starting here at this point. We know from the Bode's plot that once the poles this 3 dB point goes, the loop gain will start falling by minus 20 dB per decade okay. and it reaches if there is no pole till then it will go to the 0 dB point or it crosses the omega axis at this point which is your gain bandwidth point. And let us say if the second pole occurs here that will also give you another 20 dB per decade fall. So, this 20 plus the second pole 20. So, the next fall will start going by 40 dB. If there is another pole somewhere here, then a 60 dB it will start falling down afterwards. Let us say the third poles occur here at this point, 60 dB will start falling. But once the gain falls below minus 20 dB or even 0 dB, it is not a gain anyway. Is that correct? Gain means log of something which is positive only if it is positive dB, otherwise it is a fraction and if it is a fraction we may still call it a gain but it is not really a gain. So, gain is only up to this as long as it is plus dB. Okay. Now, if you if you have done your complex algebra well and I last day I did tell this tan inverse or the angle for this is tan inverse imaginary by real essentially gives me what they call argument or tan inverse points and for these you study it if not some other day. At first pole uh, it should at least have 45 degree down from the mid band point. Mid band point start 180 degree because that is how the loop gain starts. Okay. So, from 180 at the pole it should have gone to 45 degree down because this slope is 45 degree per decade. Why 45? Tan inverse 1 is 45. So, that is a 45 degree. So, from 180 it goes to 135 at the pole position, 45 degree down per decade assuming okay, per, at the pole. And it continues to fall by 45 degree per decade as the frequency increases. But since there is no pole ahead, then below this after this total of j 1 j is over 90 degree the phase will become constant and it continues to remain constant but it wants that at the second pole it should go 45 degree further down. So, from this 90 degree it should go to 45 degree. So, this 45 degree per decade must cross at 45 degree point at the second pole is that clear. So, this therefore slope becomes something like this and this is the point. Please remember these are the points of interest to me. At the pole P2 or at this gain bandwidth point, the phase of loop phase, loop gain phase is how much? 45 degree. Is that clear? If you increase further this gain 60 dB or 40 dB down, then finally phase will become 0. Okay, phase will become 0. If you further go down, it will actually increase further minus of that value as if you say. When the oscillation starts, when the output and input becomes in phase, if they are out of phase, they will remain in negative feedback stable situation. What we are trying to see now is if when the gain is 0, you are still in the negative feedback phase 45 degree you are away from it is that correct. Let us say if this point would have occurred here I, I do not have figure here somewhere then what would have happened the gain would have been positive a 0 and your phase now is 0 or other side which means the signal is now returning phase with the input is that correct which is the condition of growth that is instability. So, to keep it stable what is the criteria when the gain is loop gain is positive the phase should not cross 0. 
So, the margin up to which this is available to you is called phase margin. So, how much is phase margin with me here? 45 degrees. So, 45 degrees is the phase margin available till that time the gain you can see from here beyond this the gain has already crossed 0 and my phase has not gone to 0. Is that correct? Beyond if this could have gone somewhere here the gain would have remained positive and phase would have crossed 0 then I would have in phase component in the feedback in which case the growth would have started. So, this is essentially called phase margin. Then at 0 degree phase if the gain is negative then you are safer this is called gain margin. At 0 degree phase how much you are away from GBW point is it called gain margin ok. Right now this is negative but let us say if you are the opposite side gain margin will be positive and phase margin will become negative which means you will have a unstable situations. is that correct. So, in normal case gain margins are not specified because they essentially represent phi m in a way. So, we only say as long as phase margin is 45 degree. Why 45 degree is important for me? Why not third? even as long as it is anything between 45 I am still safe. What is the worry we do not want to go below 45 anything? Any additional capacitor parasitic appears how much phase it can give you 90 degree ok. That may push it down earlier than what you thought ok. So, the minimum because 50 percent point I have to get it. So, I say at least 45 I should have. So, that the worst is gain margin is 0 at phase margin is 0. So, you are exactly cutting each point is that clear. So, the minimum phase margin for stability is 45. Now, we will see tomorrow uh, some more details of this and we will prove that the phase margins are essentially adjusted because what will phase margin will do they are deciding poles is that correct. We know poles decide the bandwidths ok. So, by changing the phase margin you are also designing the bandwidths for the amplifier. So, how much otherwise you would have got the 90 also you say very safe, very safe may have a lower bandwidth because then only this can occur ok that very safe may create your bandwidth very very small. So, you need higher bandwidths and you also need safe margins. So, somewhere between 45 is very lower so never try it 55 degree to 65 70 degree is the range in which and this number has something to do with transient response also which we will see next time zeta functions ok. We are right now only looking which frequency response frequency response if I see a time response I suddenly see something else is happening at the phase changes ok and that time will say ok how much margin I have really to work with. See you next time.